I know people that literally get offended by that. Mm. Um, it, I, to me, it would be like if um, if if they decided to say, well, you know what? Given that this was the original thing, we're going to go by. We want you black people to be going by Negro because that's what you guys actually are. You're Negroids. We're Caucasoids. So that's the phrase that we're going to like insist on after we've like clearly defined like we don't want to be Negro. We don't want that phrase, right? Mm-hmm. Um, I, I think I think it's kind of it's silly and it's presumptuous. Um, but you know that's the left they they kind of do that. There we go. Hey. Hey. Hey, friend. How's it going, buddy? All right. Um. Yeah. Thanks for having this uh, talk with me. Um. You know, we've been saying we're going to have a one-on-one talk for a very long time. Yeah, we have. And yeah. We've never gotten around to it. This is actually. Yeah. I'm shocked it's happening now. To be honest with you. Yeah. Seriously. It's <laughs> uh but this kind of just came together last second uh but i'm I'm glad you were down with it right yeah and i want to start things off with and then <laughs> because i haven't seen this before because it may not be apparent afterwards right is that i do consider fanatic a friend <laughs> <laughs> well, we need a preamble huh so I'm, 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 I'm in for it today <laughs> <laughs> uh yeah i do consider a, a fanatic a friend uh we have a lot of differences and which is great i i really appreciate him uh for uh those differences um but uh no matter what it may like at the end it'll still be that way all right <laughs> yeah for sure <laughs> so i'm prepared i'm prepared for all the smoke you know i'm gonna dish it out too okay 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 so i <laughs> i wanted to uh like I actually want to have like a discussion, maybe right, and try to find our differences, and I uh, try to calmly <clears throat> work through those. You know, not that we're gonna solve it and end up agreeing on these things, certainly not. Um, but like calmly work away through them. Uh, mm-hmm. like I told you on in our DMs, I don't think we'll be able to help ourselves. <laughs> yeah. Right. Because <laughs> but... I'm me and you're you, so yeah. I mean, we're not, we're not, we're not gonna, we're not gonna be delusional here. <laughs> <laughs> Certainly not. Uh, so, uh, but I'm, uh, that's my goal, though, to to, to at least uh, try to keep it uh, civil and you know just work a way through. Um, okay. And yeah, and let I, I, and I'll try not to filibuster. I know I do it sometimes. I, I'll admit it. I'll say it. I'll do it. Sure. I'll try not to filibuster. Uh, uh, I hope you will try not to do uh, the same, so that we can both you know get through this thing. Um, oh, for sure. I'm more long winded than you are, for sure. Without that. So <laughs> I'll right. try to do my best too. Okay. So um here's what I was thinking about. I was thinking about um uh like your ideas on uh well the the left in general, but that's just way too vague. Um but uh like social uh progressivism, right? I think that's like the part that we really <clears throat> uh disagree on, right? Like um mm-hmm. you are a bit more conservative, so socially conservative. Um, and like your ideas, uh, uh, for the family, I think are a bit different than mine. Um, your ideas for, uh, I, I guess child raising, I, I would probably be, uh, quite different than, than mine. Um, I guess so. Yeah. Uh, so, okay. Well, what has been tossed around is <laughs> the term, uh, peace and F, right? Mm-hmm. Um, you seem to have a certain idea in your head about what the left believes, like where the left has gone too far, right? Um, mm-hmm. And I want you to, to take it from there, right? Like, where what are those ideas? Maybe toss out a few of them, or maybe toss out one of them, doesn't matter. Um, and like, uh, let's like examine whatever it is uh, and then go from there. Sure. So, I, I mean, I guess in a nutshell, it just seems like the left has gone really far on, as far as um, I, I think the, the intention behind it is progressive, right? Like they want to be um, inclusive and accepting and tolerant and not discriminatory and all of those, you know, those things. Uh, the problem is that they do so, like in order to, like to achieve that aim, like they are willing to sacrifice some of the institutions, which I think are particularly beneficial. For instance, um, Google, I think at one point they said that they wanted to completely eradicate the phrase family friendly and they didn't want that used anymore because they felt like that was exclusionary um uh against 
uh, homosexual uh, couples um, against, I mean, I guess that was pretty much it, against homosexual couples who didn't have children um, and things like that. Um, and they started trying to imply that family friendly was a dog whistle. And so then they said, we're not going to use that phrase anymore. Um, and things like that. Or when like Black Lives Matter, I remember there was a point in time when they were saying things like, uh, we need to, dis uh, we need to d dismantle the family unit and start recognizing that people live lives in all of these other various ways. And so the, the family unit is not like, it shouldn't be the focus and all these kinds of things. And uh, it, so it just seems like on the left, very frequently, we're having this almost destruction of the family unit. And I, I would say uh, a, a, uh, another pernicious way that this like ends up showing itself is when the left, when it comes to things like children, um, and you have the people on the left that would like say things like, well, you know, um, the school should be able to tell the child or advise the child, you know, on, on some things without the knowledge of the parents and things like that, where it just seems like they have this idea almost that the family is not particularly important. Sometimes parents aren't particularly important as long as their ideology is moving forward. And that to me seems pretty, pretty harmful. Um, Quite a bit, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, I'm, I'm just writing it down. Um, yeah, I'm trying to just to keep track of things here, right? Um, and sure. uh, not. <clears throat> okay, so uh, let's take it from the top. So I hadn't heard uh, this thing about uh, Google uh, saying getting rid of the term family friendly. I'm going to take your word for it. Um, uh, that's a thing, but I just I just haven't heard of it. Um, but uh, and could you give me the contours of this? Like, are you saying that within like uh, Google searches, or maybe just within the terms of like there are their company documentation, right? Like, we won't use the term family friendly within our like HR policies. Man, I wish I had more specifics. I don't. I I could Google it. Uh, <laughs> let me <laughs> let, let me see really quick. Um, <clears throat> that's pretty um, funny. Um, <laughs> Uh, yeah. So I, I'll, I'll just give you see a if moment. It comes up right away. Yeah. Hmm? Let me see. If it doesn't, that's fine. I can still talk about it's, it. I don't think it is. Freak. I don't know. Okay, uh, that's all right. So, but let me let me work off of that, right? I also mm -hmm. also work with this. Okay. Um. So, uh, let's assume for a, a second, uh, this is true. I can see people uh saying uh something like that, and um, let's say it laid out. Ex it was exactly how you laid it out. Okay. All right. Mm -hmm. Um, and Google was saying this to uh. So that not to be hostile to uh, gay units, whatever you would call that, right? If we can't call it family, mm -hmm. family, then, I don't know, gay units. <laughs> I mean, they're families. They're, yeah, they're, families, they're, they're, yeah. They're their own kind of family, but, you know, they're, they're families. Yeah, so... The left calls a family. He's <laughs> <laughs> trying to start with me. He's trying to start with me. <laughs> um... So I can I can see people I can see people uh, doing that. I would disagree with uh, that, right? Again, if it happened exactly as you said it did, then uh, I would disagree with that. It strikes me as um, the left's window dressing, right? Of of caring the aesthetics of actually giving a shit, right? Um, mm -hmm. uh, I I think it's it's fair to say. Um, and I think you something you certainly wouldn't disagree is that uh, when we're talking about uh, allies, right, whether it be white allies or like um, uh, allies within like other like accesses, right? I don't know um, that so often that's all you get, right? Um, because they aren't necessarily challenging uh, the power uh, behind any like specific bigotry, right? Like you can get rid, let's say. You got rid of the term family friendly. You scrub that away from like the world. Like, what does that do? Fucking anyone, right? Like, put like little right. guardrails around the internet so uh, 
that gay people maybe don't feel slightly bad about a thing that most of them like have never put any fucking thought into. <laughs> Absolutely, right? Um, but I think you get that a lot from like uh resistance types, you know, like the resistance left. You 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 hear that term. Um mm -hmm. where you have uh people on the left, like liberals, I would say, right? Uh this is it's great because I can call them liberals and distance myself from them. But <laughs> but like I think that uh those people who um uh, have a habit of uh I guess uh not uh, challenging structures, right? Um, mm -hmm. and, and instead uh, challenge aesthetics, right? Like, uh, it was Donald Trump really such a bad president for them, or was his aesthetics bad, right? Like, you know, you got the Women's March, but what were they really marching for? Were they really marching to protect women in general or whatever? Like, Donald Trump hadn't done anything, like, when the Women's March ha happened, right? Um, but he had said, like, bad things, you know? He had, um, I'm sorry, I am filibustering here. I don't mean to. I'm just uh, trying to respond. Oh, it's okay. Yeah, Go yeah, ahead. okay. Um, but he had said uh, 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 bad things, you know, right? He was uncouth. And, and I think it was dangerous rhetoric, uh, but you had this amazing showing of, of women, of just general women, right? Just women TM, right? Uh, showing up. Um, and, like, they that's what this seemed to be the focus, is... That rather than like any like the the structures, um, that actually keep women down. I think those people are like the type that like want to want to brunch, you know, right? Like they 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 wanted to um go back to normal. Remember that uh talking point, right? Um, that on you heard that from some uh people on the left is like, well, I we got to get this thing back so we can go back to to uh to normal, you know, like. Donald Trump was some sort of aberration, right? Once we get him out of office, well, then we're good. Uh, uh, it's, it's accomplished. Mission's accomplished, and I can stop paying attention, you know? Right. I feel like right. uh, it's just my opinion. And maybe I, I'm, I'm, I'm drawing too many con uh, connections here, right? But I feel like those are the same types that would push what you're saying, the family friendly, anti-family friendly term. Sure. Um, similarly, I think... <clears throat> even like when you like the, I, I think it's the same kind of thing as like uh like the latinx thing remember remember mm. when like yeah like they were like going really ham like really trying to like insist on this latinx thing and like latin people were just like wait no we don't want this this has nothing to do with us like what are you talking about um and it's just like again it's almost like a they think that they know better it's almost like this white savior complex like we're gonna help you guys get out of your oppression and but I'm sorry, that's a whole digression. Anyway, my point being, there is, it does seem like um, on the left, you do have this kind of challenging of of, of that that whole family thing. And like saying that, um, I, I remember you had those progressive women that were making stupid statements like, a man is not necessary uh, for the raising of babies. Um, um, you know, the, the feminist movement is pretty progressive and they had some similar nonsense that they were really kind of pushing. Um, yeah, it just it just seems it seems like that's kind of you guys' deal. Um, so when you brought the Latinx thing, it reminds me of something. Actually, I wanted to um a video I wanted to show you. It's by a creator whose name I'm fuck Innuendo Studios, right? Uh, mm -hmm. He's gotten pretty big on the left, right? He does these like videos. He uses like these like little cartoons. He's like. I think he would agree cheaply made cartoons, but like he just like just to get his point across, right? Um and uh he like uh talks about like um conservatism, like what is the shape of conservatism uh today? Um and he had a video, his last video, which he hadn't done one in a while, uh last video, he talked about that another again, the uh, talking about like the shape of conservatism and, and racism, but he also goes into um, like, uh, anti-racism and people on the left, right? Like, quote-unquote, like, white allies, um, mm -hmm. and, like, their, uh, complicit, um, nature. And I really, I was, I had, I was thinking of you as I was watching it, but, uh, 
uh, but like not talking about the entire video, something that he did do, right, which is a person I actually respect overall, like I think his analysis actually is super interesting if you look at his entire work, um, is that he said something, I had a uh, term I hadn't heard before, and I'm still not exactly sure what he said, but he didn't say uh, Latin X, he said like Latin A. And yeah, I know, I hadn't heard that. <laughs> I think that's what he said, Latin A. I like to rewind it a few times to try to hear it, but like I hadn't heard of that, Latin A. I don't know how it's spelled. Um, but, uh, like, that's crazy. And what, it, and I'm like, oh, why? <laughs> like, why do you have to keep inventing these terms? I think it's very clear that, uh, the our Latin brothers and sisters don't give a shit. <laughs> like, that's yeah, not like, in, in fact, it's actually even more offensive. They're like, yeah, yeah, we, 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 like, this is the way our language works. Like we've had it gendered, like, you know, for a reason. Um, and yeah, like. Like I'm, I'm, I'm not that thing. So don't call me that. You know. Like, yeah. Uh, I know people that literally get offended by that. Mm. Um. It, I to me, it would be like if um. If if they decided to say, well, you know what? Given that this was the original thing, we're gonna go by. We want you black people to be going by Negro because that's what you guys actually are. You're Negroids. We're Caucasoids. So that's the phrase that we're gonna like insist on. After we've like clearly defined, like we don't want to be Negro. We don't want that phrase, right? Mm -hmm. Um. I think I think it's kind of it's silly and it's presumptuous, um, but you know that's the left they they kind of do that. <laughs> so, you know, I I think uh, it is uh, to a certain extent. And it's just like, um, it's yeah, it's doing this um, uh, like a play, um, like pretend play of of like being concerned now i don't want to i don't want to overstate my case in that like i think there are a lot of people who you know who say those things are just trying to be helpful right like okay mm -hmm. oh, let me let me say something okay all right and maybe i shouldn't say this uh but as a kid right i had thought or i was educated uh, uh that it was uh the um proper thing like the the polite thing to say oriental rather than Asian, mm. you know? And I would correct yeah. people around that, like my family. My family would just take my word for it. It's like, oh, okay, then we'll call them Orientals. <laughs> like, I, thought, so I, I really thought that was the case. That was my fault. My bad. Sorry. <laughs> but I was corrected <laughs> um, on that. And, uh, but like, you know, it, 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 it didn't come from a place of like, uh, well, uh, like, like, I wasn't trying to um, like necessarily protect anyone. I just I'd be doing the thing that I thought was polite, right? This is what I hear is a polite thing to, to say. I was wrong. Um, and this is what I'll do. And I'll tell the people, hey, don't say that other thing, right? Say this thing. Mm -hmm. Um, so I'm sure there are people who are saying Latin X, right? Who are like, oh, okay, is that polite? Like, I don't have Latin people in my community. I didn't have Asian people in my like community, right? Um, so I can't check with them, and right. so. You know, I, I arrive at this. So I think that, um, again, not to overstate the case, because there's 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 some you know white allies um, and allies of other races uh, who who do that um, for those aesthetics. But others are just like, okay, I I guess you know what you're talking about, so I'm going to follow your lead on this. Do you agree right. with that? Hundred percent. Because uh, I think with a lot of the stuff, it's not. <sighs> It's hard because so some of it I think is intentional. Like when if you start talking about like the Wall Street nigga, not Wall Street. If you want to start, when you start talking about Congress, like with the performative stuff that they do, I think mm -hmm. that stuff is literally evilly intended. Mm -hmm. now, let me let me close this window really quick. Sure, no uh, problem. Take your time. <laughs> I often so like, have all people outside my window. <laughs> Go ahead. Yeah. So when we're like you know talking about George Floyd and what's going on and all that stuff and. Uh, you know, like we're talking about police reform and then the Republicans actually come up with a decent police reform bill and the Democrats reject it and say, nah, we got our own police reform bill that's different than you guys. And then now they're pitting their their reforms against one another and neither one of them are actually getting passed. And then at the same time, you got like Congress kind of stepping up and deciding we're going to go ahead and, um, you know, we're going <laughs> to, we're going to, uh, what do they do? They, they We're going to, we're going to put on this like black, black, red and green garb, right? Like they were doing the whole um, Pan-African garb, colors, whatever. And, you know, they we're going to kneel. And they were doing all these optical things while not actually accomplishing any of the things that we actually needed. 
Um, I I think that kind of stuff right there is uh, I think I think they're actually intentional with theirs. Um, it's hard for me to give them the pass to say, oh yeah, no no no, no this isn't on purpose. They, they don't know any better. They're just kind of doing what what's what they think is best. I think that they are actually going out of their way to do all of the symbolic gestures they can, um, so that they don't actually have to fight for any of the actual things that actually matter, which is gross because I'm basically accusing them of intentionally allowing our harm to continue but i think that that's actually the case fanatic i think uh we have a lot of common ground here i think that those individuals um i would label them as liberals um i would label them as a resistance types i would label them as as a distinct um uh, political ideology from progressivism um and mm -hmm. like uh the the Think about the Cap Kente Claw thing, right? Like, that was in the back of my mind as we were discussing all this. Um, so I'm glad you brought it up. But, like, who was kneeling there, right? It was, like, Nancy Pelosi. Um, and uh, we, can, we can pull up the list of the individuals who were in that picture, right? Uh, doing that. But those were all, like, the, the liberal establishment. Um, they aren't uh, the progressives who are um, uh, fighting for like structural change, right? And so, some maybe structural, some structural change that you wouldn't agree with, but like they're talking about like changing the structures of power rather than simply like doing that, right? Like, um, and then do, uh, accomplishing nothing to actually address the issue. Um, so like, I, I would agree that this is like someone, like, someone suggested this. And it might have been that black uh, woman, because it was a black congresswoman who led the uh, charge there. Um, I forget who, which one it was, but uh, she was she was part of that photo op. Um, maybe it was her, right? And and these other types were like, yeah, this is this is genius, right? Like uh, we're gonna nail it, right? Uh, these are the uh, same people who would have a. Uh, um, uh, would sing like John Lennon's Imagine, right? At the start when you're a celebrity. And That's just like, disgusting. we're doing a thing here, guys, right? And we're going to bring people together. It's a, such a kind, who, no one gives a shit, right? This is yeah. from fucking Nancy Pelosi. Remember Nancy Pelosi? Who, um, uh, she had, she was doing that interview. Um, it was during the height of the pandemic, right? She was at an interview at her house. And she was sh like showing off her place. She showed off her uh, kitchen, uh, like with like the freezer and stuff. And she was like all her like ice cream. That, that was like a big part of it. And like it, it was like super tone deaf because a lot of people, um, like the short the store shelves were bare at the time, right? Mm -hmm. Um, the, I'm not sure if you remember this moment, but like yeah, the store shelves mm -hmm. were bare. And uh, she was like being just super uh, tone deaf about like you know having food available. Her her fridge was fridge was fucking stocked, like uh, and other people you know were going hungry. So if you look at listen to that interview, it's just like What's wrong with you, lady. They don't know any better? They don't know any better. She's so fucking out of touch. Sorry, like I'm just gonna. <laughs> if you get me started on Nancy Pelosi. Ah. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, but so so I would say that's distinct from progressivism though. Right. Okay. And 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 I uh, do you uh, agree with that? My analysis there. Well, I think most liberals are pretty progressive, r rather than con conservative. Um, they're not. I would find progressive, maybe. Um, I guess, man, I don't know the exact definition, but I would say progressives typically are for, um, kind of willing to challenge system, challenge the status quo in order to like move what they would call forward. Um, and I'd say that, yeah, th th that's progressive. And I would say that in some ways they're willing to, in some ways, um, or at least in their verbiage, they're, they're hyper progressive, right? Cause then they're all about like, yeah, you know, black lives matter. We need to dismantle some systemic racism and black people have experienced all these things, but just when it comes to things like reparations that would actually fix it, then, you know, they're just really quiet. Um, they're really actually antagonistic to re reparations. Um, yeah. So, okay. No, if you're, no, that was it. Yeah. So, um, I, I've your definition is workable, and I just like went to Wikipedia just to uh, cut right through it. Uh, progressivism is a way of thinking that holds that it is possible 
through political action for human societies to improve over time. As a political movement, progressivism supports uh, purports to advance the human condition through social reform based on advancements in science, technology, economic development, and social organization. Um, <laughs> Uh, I'll, I'll just read the rest of this first paragraph. Uh, adherence to this uh, way of thinking hold that progressivism has universal application and endeavor to spread this idea to human societies everywhere. Progressivism arose during the Age of Enlightenment out of the belief that civility in Europe was improving due to the application of new empirical knowledge uh, to the governing society. Okay, um, so we'll just we'll just work off uh, that first part and you know uh, what you were saying, um, like I I guess. What it seems to me, right, the difference between progressive and a liberal um, is that um, is that idea of aesthetics, right? Like, uh, liberals, th speaking of civility, right, are about civility, about the process, right? Mm -hmm. um, about saying that, um, well, we have to uh, respect the... Um, uh, the structures of like uh, the Senate, right? Um, uh, a liberal would be fine with saying, "Hey, this parliamentarian person, this unelected individual who like you've never even fucking heard of, um, in terms of, of the Senate." Well, yeah, they said we can't have what was it fifteen dollars minimum uh, wage, right? We can't put that within a a, a bill. Um, I think that's what the, the thing I'm thinking of. Um, but anyway, uh, that we can't put uh, put this. Uh, progressive action, right? That challenges uh, power, right? It has economic impact. We can't have that because the process says otherwise. Um, and so we got to respect that process. And so you'll have the uh, the uh, democratic uh, uh, the democratic establishment say, "Oh, well, we can't do anything," right? Parliamentarian uh, said otherwise. That they they say, "Oh, yeah, we really wanted to." We definitely, right? Oh god, we really wanted to make something like that happen. Um, but it turns out we couldn't. Because the process, we gotta respect the process. These are the same people who also said that like uh who are for uh things like bipartisanship, right? Um like me, I'm not for bipartisanship. I'm for perfectly for being partisan because if, if it advances my goals. And bipartisanship answered my uh, uh advanced my goals, and that I would do that, right? That's fine. But and when it's an obstruction to uh, uh, like working with conservatives to um, improving the human condition, as uh, that definition pointed out, when it's obstruction to improving society, to challenging um, uh, inequities, right? Then that is something uh, that's a problem for me. Um, then that is a obstacle that I'm going to tear down, right? And by that, I mean, in this case, like tear down their opposition, right? Like break them. Uh, liberals... Don't do that. So yeah, what are, what are your thoughts? Well, well, for one, already I don't I don't think fifteen dollars minimum wage was like I, I don't think that that's actually even a smart thing. I mean, you know, you could really upset all kinds of markets in different areas. Like minimum wage is different in different places because the cost of living is insanely different in different areas. So then to just go and just say nope, just across the board, we're doing minimum wage and that's it. I think that sounds like a a pretty bad idea. Hold on, hold on, um, hold on. But but before and before you finish that, like remember what I said, like previously, right? The progressives that I've been uh, thinking of, right? Like let's say let's name like AOC, Bernie Sanders, right? Uh, I said they were challenging um, uh, power structures, right? And uh, and they might be doing it in ways that you disagree with. So it's fine if you disagree with that, right? But that's not my point. Whether you agree with like that specific policy uh, prescription or not, it's that. It's a change, right, and, and a serious change that has economic consequences. It's, it's, that's you could the very least un, un, uh, admit that it's not an aesthetic change when you're, you know, increasing people's oh, sure. actual wages. Yeah, right. So it's just sure. one example of that. I'm um, the Medicare for all is another problems. example of that. But no, no, you can disagree with that. It's fine. I'm not actually debating this. I'm not debating like the 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 benefits of it. But I'm saying that this is an example of the difference between progressivism. And, and liberalism, right? No, 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 okay. no, no. If your idea is that progressivism says we want to change things, even if it's going to create more problems, even if it doesn't make a whole bunch of sense, and that liberals are problematic for being resistant to changing things unnecessarily and unwisely, then I, I, that sounds crazy to me. And I would never want to claim to be a progressive. If progressive ideas are going to be short-sighted, myopic, problematic, 
Um, and, and you're saying that there are people there that are safeguarding against these retarded ideas. Um, and those people are liberals. I would probably identify myself as a liberal. I'm not a liberal. But that's probably what I would identify myself as, because, yes, a lot of these ideas are absolutely functionally retarded. For example, when you got like people that like are really gung ho about protecting the environment, and I think protecting the environment is a great thing. But when those same individuals start saying, and our way of doing so is we're going to go ahead and restrict everyone's ability to use straws. And it's like, well, OK, is that is that. Do, do you think that's going to help things? And it's like, well, yeah, that's 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 what we're going with. Uh, we kind of believe in this thing. So straws, yeah, get rid of those. And it's like, well, that doesn't really fix anything. It seems kind of stupid, um, but but that's that's what they do. Um, and so then it's like, if you're saying the liberal idea is the one that says, no, nah, we're going to go ahead and stop you guys from restricting straws because that's like literally not what's causing the plastic in the ocean. It's, that's that's. It's literally less than 0.001% of all the plastic in the ocean. This has nothing to do with the problem. Um, I, yeah, then I guess, yeah, then if, if that's what you would say is, is, is liberal, then yeah, again, sign me up. I, I don't like just, I, I don't like stupid ideas because stupid ideas sake, right? Like, like if someone like proposed to me, hey, in order to fix the environment, let's just outlaw cars right now. And it's like, well, it's a progressive idea. It changes the system. You can't say it won't do meaningful. And it's like, well, sure, but it's a pat bad idea for I don't have to list off all of the reasons. And if that makes me a liberal to say I don't want to go down this retard train, then, I mean, hell, it sounds like liberals are amazing, even though we know they're trash. Okay. Uh, all right. So I'll, I'll try to untangle this. Um, so I, I would say that uh, getting rid of straws or... Uh, things like a, a sugar tax, things like that, are liberal ideas, right? Like, uh, that's exactly that. They actually aren't uh, challenging anything. Um, that uh, That is, uh, like, it, it, it's like biz work to say that we're doing uh, something, right? Rather than, like, uh, tackling the heart of the issue, right? It's like, you can say that, like, you know, uh, like, look, getting straws out of the ocean... Yeah, it would be a good thing, sure, right? Um, but like that's uh but when you realize that like we're just like literally dumping trash, like there's like dumping garbage, like plastic garbage in directly into the ocean. Um that like we ship our, our plastic abroad, sometimes the plastic that we're gonna fucking recycle, right? And we ship them to third world countries, they're like, we're not gonna take these, we're just gonna just dump things in the ocean, right? Then that then that seems like a bigger issue than like the straws, right? Um and I, I would say that is a uh, a a liberal idea. Yeah, I wouldn't uh, necessarily call that progressive. Um, but I, I guess maybe the problem with going down this uh that that kind of a thought train is because is then you're gonna say something um like well, this sounds progressive to me, and I'm gonna say that's not progressive, that's liberal, and then it's gonna shake out to like, well, all the bad ideas you're saying are liberal, and all the good ideas well, that, are saying. I was going are, to say that though. I, it I'm sounds progress. like I think, it sounds like what all you're saying is just. Any idea that doesn't function as a liberal idea and any idea that hasn't been passed and has been blocked is a progressive idea. No, 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 no. Well, I wouldn't, no, I, I definitely, I certainly wouldn't say that. I wouldn't say that. I mean, I would say like the civil rights movement, right? Like that's like progressivism in action. Uh, like, like, yeah, I think we actually do have wins in terms of, of progressivism, things that we take for okay. granted now, maybe, but like. Kim, or maybe, maybe not just in past, but. The, I, the good ideas that worked are progressive, and then any ideas, uh, you know, any ideas sure. that you think would work that are blocked are progressive, and liberals are blocking them. Okay, well, but then maybe, okay, so maybe if you uh, present ideas that were actually uh, uh, put out by noted progressives, then there may be the things I disagree with. But I, I, okay, I want to try to start with one thing then, right? Um, and see if we can find common ground on this. Right? Uh, Medicare for all. Good idea, bad idea. That's definitely a progressive idea. I'm not running away from that. Good idea, sure. bad idea. Well, there's different ways. When you say uh, Medicare for all, but also no one else would be able to use, um, uh, uh, we're going to outlaw private insurance, pr pr pretty bad idea, right? Um, but like Medicare for all and... Uh, it doesn't you know, necessarily like, mean that, to be clear. So I, but well, I'm saying that those are, those are there's two different things, right? Because okay. like that's what like what was being proposed at one point was the outlaw of all of the you know like they wanted it to be all handled by the state. They wanted that to be the only way, and they wanted to outlaw private insurance. That was something that was being floated around. 
I think that's a terrible idea. And I think that's the idea. Like when those kind of ideas start getting floated is when you start running into um, insane amounts of opposition. And, uh, mm, okay. So, uh, for, so let me do, uh, instead of doing that, let me just ask you define Medicare for all. Sure. 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 Yeah. Yeah. Um, and I'm going to get to that in a second. I, I promise. Um, uh, uh, I guess, um, like our, our disagreement depends on a, exactly why you want to keep on um, private insurance but okay so the uh, uh uh proposal that bernie sanders tossing around was you know medicare for all being like a single payer system um and that the government is uh the single buyer of health insurance um and uh you know it provides that for free of charge to its uh citizens and more right not just the citizens um but uh to the people of who are in the country are provided with uh, medical care, and he was going to get rid of um, a private insurance, except in the case where um, uh, he wasn't ba basically he wasn't banning private insurance; he was banning them uh, ha uh, copying the same uh, services that the government was providing. Right? That means that if you had private insurance, I was offering a service that the government didn't provide, and they could do that, right? Could uh, get that um, private um, care because the government wasn't buying that care, right? Um, so, you, so you could go to a private company. Let's say, just like the easy examples, like let's say you wanted plastic surgery, like private uh, insurance or something, right? Well, then you could get that care uh, from a uh, from a private provider. Um, so yeah, I, I go with that. What are your thoughts on that? Uh, I think it's still problematic. Tell me what would, why do you need to restrict the ability of private people to, 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 to access these things that the government also happens to be accessing? Why would that be, why would that be necessary? Sure. Um, because to, um, the problem with uh, leaving like these massive insurance uh, companies in place is that they undermine uh the system right like if you don't get uh um demolish the power base of this um uh wealth center is coming to my mind but that's not the word the, the phrase i want to use here um but uh of of this money making political apparatus right because those health insurance companies they uh have an effect on our political uh, landscape, right? Um, they don't just sit there quietly uh, collecting your premiums right, and hoping for the best in Washington. They lobby Washington. Um, so uh, if you uh, left them in place, uh, then they would uh, use their uh, influence to um, uh, undermine the public um, option, right? B basically, how, uh, how uh, so? the Oh, be sure. Uh, well, through, through, through lobbying, right? So uh, you can um, see this. Um, we can compare this uh, with, I guess, the ACA. Lobbying to do what? Sure, sure. To weaken the uh, the public option, to make it worse, right? So uh, Worse how? Me, please, give me a second. <laughs> I'm, try I'm trying to answer your question here. Um, is we can look uh, like at the um, ACA, and um, the, uh, the Frank uh, Dodd Act, right? Are you, are you familiar with the Frank Dodd Act? Um, no. That happened uh, right after the um, uh, 2008 uh, recession. Um, and it was like a general... Oh, Dodd-Frank. Dodd-Frank, Dodd -Frank. Yes, Oh, yes, did yes, I say yes, yes, yes. Frank Dodd? Sorry, he said Dodd Frank Dodd. Frank. And I was like, I'm sorry, yeah. Dodd-Frank. That's my fault. Okay. Um, sure. Yeah, Dodd-Frank. Yeah, yeah. Um, when that happened, right... As those rules were put, uh, being, as the, the legislation being sculpted, and after it was passed, as those rules were being put in place, the uh, uh, banking industry and the housing industry got to work, right? The real estate industry, they got to work on that. So, for instance, we saw, um, uh, like, rules, like, at, at the uh, SEC, right? Like, the Congress puts a law in place, right? They, 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 they set that, but then how it's implemented is through the administrative infrastructure. Um, right, the administrative state, uh, and they, they do that through regulations, right? Not necessarily through a law. The, the regulations, you know, like implement the law, and 
uh, as soon as that happened, they used their influence within uh, these very governmental bodies, right, to um, whittle away that law to make it weaker, right? Even weaker than the weak sauce that had already passed. They, they made those regulations weaker um, using their influence that, like, the public cannot, like, uh, me, me and you, cannot match, right? Um, uh, uh, look, uh, even especially at, like, arcane rules that uh, you and I, who aren't financial uh, experts, are not housing experts, uh, I can't even uh, uh, wrap our heads around. But we have money interest in place who can... Um, take the time, see all these rules, right? And slowly will them away, contour them the best they can uh, to work in their advantage, right? Um, and then, uh, so moving to the ACA, uh, something uh, similar happened there where um, uh, uh, when it was clear that uh, Obama, that fucking liberal, uh, <laughs> was definitely not going to fight for a uh, public option. He never actually meant to do that. Like, as uh, the... Um, AC was being crafted, uh, you had the uh, the insurance industry's hands within it, right? Like this was supposed to put them in their place, right? To to regulate them, to, to pull them in line, but they were lobbying Congress, right? Like these are the rules, right? Um, that we want. And once the ACA was in place, um, they got to work on those regulations in the same way. So basically, if you leave a, a, a moneyed interest like that in place, they will do anything they can to undermine the, the structures, whatever they are, whether it be a public option, even not, that uh, uh, that hold them in, that, that that restrict them, right? Anything that restricts them, they'll use their power to slowly build away. So uh, to wrap it up, um, you have to uh, uh, get rid of that money base, um, uh, that moneyed interest. Money interest, I think, is the, the term I want to use. You have to get rid of that to uh, uh, ensure the success of these like uh, progressive policies, yeah. Well, so I still don't know exactly how it would be weakened. You're just telling me that they would use a political process to try to find a, to try to undermine it. Um, I didn't. Get yeah, to undermine to care. I mean, I, I can I can make something up if you want, but like we don't have a public option in place, so I can't tell you exactly their plan of attack. Um, but like I can, I, I like I can tell like like how they've attacked. Um, Medicare, right? Like the constant attacks on Medicare. Well, Medicare uh, is a competitor to the public, to the private sphere, right? It's a, com uh, a competitor there. So they want to weaken Medicare. It's in their interest. If Medicare collapsed completely, right? That would be within the uh, financial interest of the uh, private insurance industry, right? You would agree with that. Mm -hmm. Okay. Ma right? uh, ma ma maybe. Ma I, I guess possibly. How, how would it not? Um, cause I well, I, I mean, I guess if if it if it fully collapsed, sure. Yeah. Um, but I I I don't know that they've done anything in particular to 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 weaken it. I just know that that it seems to me like pretty frequently that when the government takes things over, they tend to perform worse. That just that just seems to be like kind of. I I. I'm not so, I'm not exaggerating. I'm I'm, I'm not yeah, even trying to be funny I, there. I'm, I, I, I'm dead serious. I I know you are. I know you are. Um and I'm, I'm going to disagree with you there, right? <laughs> I'm just going to leave it at that cuz this is not like uh the focus of uh of this fight. Um whether the government uh you know performs better or not. Uh, we'd have to fight that on, on, on a different night. Um, sure. The, the so I would say, the, the, let me let me let me just go ahead and lay out what right. what I think the problem is with this thing. Right. The primary problem is that the idea that when you have two different competing things, then now you have a you have a baseline and you have something to compare to. Right. So when you have public health care and you have private health care, then we can look at the private health care and say, see, you guys aren't doing right. You guys are doing pretty poorly. The same way right now we can say Medicare is boo-boo because all private insurance is so much better and the, the, the providers are better and so on and so forth. We can only say that because as it is right now, we have both. So then now the, if, if, the, if private insurance didn't exist and we got the exact quality of Medicare because we would have nothing else to compare to, we would just say this is what service is and that's just the way it is. And we can see the same exact thing in education.
Right now, we can say public education is trash. The only reason why we can say it's trash is because we have private and homeschool. And, um, you know, we, we have those things to compare to. And obviously, countries abroad. And so we can say, yes, this is trash. Otherwise, we would just have to accept it as it is. And I think I, I, I think that's just kind of the way of things. As long as you don't have anything to compare to, you kind of accept whatever it is that you, you're getting. And I think that that, that is problematic. Okay, so uh, I disagree with everything you said, uh, but that's okay. Um, that's not um, the the reason why we went down this tangent, right? To, to try to reel us back in, uh, is that we were talking about uh, structures. Oh, so uh, ACA and and like the idea of it. And I would say that if you're calling it progressive, the idea that we have to ACA get is rid not of progressive. No. I'm sorry, I'm, uh, universal health care. If you're calling that progressive, but you're saying the only way we can cheat, we can achieve that is to tear down all of the private insurance that people are used to and many people are comfortable with. I think at that point, it's not a progressive idea. It becomes incredibly harmful for the reasons that I stated. And if that's what you're talking about is progressivism, again, sign me up as a freaking liberal. And I think that's where the problem comes in is a lot of times progressive ideas are failing and, and, but they don't care who they harm in the time when it's happening. For example, when the George Floyd justice and police act got, um, happened um or when, when they were when that, that was first being positioned you got black lives matter in there downplaying and decrying what that bill is and saying oh it's really harmful and it's not a good thing and we got to do blah 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 and it's like well okay maybe you might say that this bill isn't the best thing that's ever happened to me it is but maybe to you it isn't the problem is that it is the it's the best bill that we have right now and instead what they did is they ended up writing up an entirely separate bill. Within that bill was the complete dismantle of all police officers. Um, it had things like completely decriminalizing um, uh, all drugs, all drugs of all kinds. Um, it had uh, disarming all police officers in a country with like some of the highest gun rates, right? With like some of the highest homicide rates by gun rates and some of the highest gun, gun violence. Um, it just had all of these ideas, which maybe some people will say these are progressive ideas. I would say they're retarded. And they wanted to take a dump on the George Floyd Justice and Policing Act in order to promote their retarded bill that nobody was going for. And that's a, that's a perfect example of them always... Like, again, they, they become really idealistic, and in that pursuit, they end up screwing us over. And I think that's that's a perfect example of it. So, um, I, I remember this incident, in fact, we talked about it uh, previously a few times, actually. Um, uh, but as I, I don't have, like, both of the bills in front of me, like, it's... Uh, well, okay, let, let's just uh, say this, right? The, uh, the George Floyd Act was a good act, right? It was a good bill. Um, it's literally the best, best piece of legislation I've ever seen in my entire life regarding police reform over the last 50 freaking years. There's nothing better than it ever. Just not just good. It's literally the greatest and best we've ever seen in our lifetime and the lifetime of our parents. But go ahead. Okay, sure. You, I, I'm, I'm willing to, to I jump on that. Um, okay. Um, I don't think that. Um, I think that there was a group uh, that was uh, against it, but I'm not sure if it was. Uh, progressive it was black and, lives matter and yeah i know yeah i know i i all black lives, that's fine i'm not like avoiding their name i'm just saying that there was a group that was um against it but i'm not sure progressives in general were against it but I, I, it doesn't matter it, it doesn't matter one or the other um I, getting to the heart of, of this it's it just seems that you know we have a disagreement right so um uh you um uh we were trying to figure out like you know what was progressivism and you were uh saying that well you know all the good ideas you're going to say are progressive and bad ideas are are liberal right well i have an idea um uh that would be medicare for all uh that i think is some vastly superior what we have in place uh, and to the uh a public option which is we we don't have in place oh well, more or less yeah we, we don't really have a public option in place um, and, uh, that's what I would call progressive. Okay. And the point of bringing all that up was that it challenges, um, uh, the, uh, the status quo, um, 
Like it, it, it literally up upends the sat the status quo. So like going uh with the the Medicare for all and for um the uh BLM bill, right? Um that challenges the status quo. Right? Like it, it like it upends the power structures. Um now uh, we can disagree or agree with them, but uh that that is a thing. Right. So, but so, but so, um, but so, I, so I, I, so just comparing that to to liberalism, which uh, doesn't uh, do these things. Um, I do think, think liberals are the li ones. Sorry. Sorry. Which are you saying the George Floyd Justice and Policing Act is liberal? No, I wouldn't say that. I would say it's uh, progressive. From what I remember, I don't remember the whole book. Right? It's been a while. Um, but gotcha. like, uh, I, 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 I would think that it would. Um, I would call that progressive bill. Do you think that Black Lives Matter, BLM, do you think that that's a progressive um, organization? Uh, I don't know what to think of that organization. Like, like you're talking about the, like the, the national BLM you, group, yeah, right? Yeah, the organization. Uh, I don't know what to uh, think of that outfit. Um, I think it's a poorly run outfit. I would think there are progressives in them, in it, right? Uh, but it's, it's a... I mean, look. They're up to like criminal activity, right? It seems like so. I, I don't have much thoughts on them, um, but uh, I think that they do represent some progressive ideal. Say that okay. So, I mean, I guess it kind of man, if if someone as obvious as BLM can be called progressive, I, I no, 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 I'm not trying to like run away from, I'm just saying that this is a group that like has um, like stolen uh money from the people who have uh donated uh for them right like um they have uh uh been doing shady accounting um uh they haven't actually helped uh any of the people any of the uh like satellite satellite blm uh groups right like uh like I, I don't know what to say about this organization right but like if you want to say like if you want to call them a progressive group sure go ahead Fine, that's all, that's fine. I, I don't care. I'm just saying that when this you judge a group by by the things that it that the th things that it claimed to have wanted on basic basically on their purported claims and the things sure that they call supported. call them progressive. I I will call them progressive. I, I don't. I, it's not a point I'm going to fight you on. Like I'm just saying this group is not um a trustworthy. I'm not going to fight you on this. Like I don't. I don't want to make this a point of contention. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Good. So then, so so that I think this is where like yeah, th th that becomes a, a bit of a problem because it's, it doesn't mean I sign on to everything they say. I just want to be. Of course not. Of course okay. not. Okay. Go ahead. Then. Um. But yeah, like like I I think for me part of the problem is that like okay so if like they are a progressive organization but then uh, again like we've ran into problems where they are opposition to things that are important and that we need. Um. And to me, it's like yo if if you're gonna. If you're going to start being the opposition, then it's 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 hard for me to like. Uh, one, I can't support you at all, and um, I think that's that's the example. I think when when BLM um, pushes back and fights us on like again, really beautiful, really well. Oh, uh, you uh, kicked your mic, and then now I don't hear you anymore. I still don't. Oh. Uh, coming back, doing something. Uh, uh, you are your thing is lighting up, but I don't hear you. Oh, uh, you I heard, now I hear something. Okay, okay. Here we go. go. You're back. Um, yeah. So it's like, um, and 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 a lot of times that I mean, I, I feel like this is something that I think is pretty uh, a pretty common experience is that um, the things that are being called progressive are very oftentimes antagonistic towards actual progress um like when you know we're talking about reform the police and then you have progressive idiots well i guess what you would call progressive idiots that are referring to abolishing the police and i i would say that those kinds of things are, are really problematic like once you become antagonistic to actual realistic tangible growth and progress to me, then yeah, you you are you're part of the problem, and that's what they're that's what they have done pretty pretty repeatedly, pretty consistently. Okay, uh, so I'm not going to defend BLM, the National BLM uh, movement. I'm just not going to do it, right? No, like, no, no, not just them. Guys. I'm talking about like all of it, like because <laughs> that's not even BLM. That's not a BLM thing. Like the 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 the, the, the abolish the police wasn't constrained to BLM. 
abolish the police seemed like that was just in a lot of leftists and progressives. And I would say okay. that that was harmful to the actual defund the police movement, which I okay. see had some, some reasonable, uh, you know, things. Sure. Sure. What I would say is that, um, mm, that definitely was the uh, left position to abolish the police. Uh, and I guess I would say that when you have a political movement, you are going to have people uh, all along a spectrum, right? And all of them, I uh, think that whatever position they have is acceptable, right? Uh, is where the country uh, should be. Like, so I was, and I believe you are, um, uh, at defund the police. Okay, right? Like, uh, mm -hmm. agreed? Yeah, we were mm -hmm. at defund the police. But you have people who are also on the left, right? Like Destiny, um, who, who would say defund the police was moronic, right? And that's um, getting in the way of the real reforms, right? That he would have put in place. Um, so, like, uh, I say that, like, I'm not necessarily concerned for people who are, who are saying abolish the police, right? I'm not concerned about uh, their optics because I just know that. Um, yeah, these are people along a spectrum who have these uh, ideas. I think abolish police uh, wasn't uh, going to work, or any and our or any conception of that simply wasn't going to uh, work at this time, right? That if there is a world where uh, we could abolish the police, if that's a thing that can ever exist, we are nowhere near that. Right? It's like um, how I want to uh, would one day. Like have an actual true open border society. I would love for that to be the case, but I recognize at that at this point in time that that's not possible, right? Like with the political structures, the economic structures that we have in place, there's literally no way we could that would be a workable system. Um, but that's why I don't advocate for that, right? So even if I have um, sympathies for abolish the police, um, uh, at at the very least, I know that that's something I think that's going to happen. But I I'm not so concerned that there happens to be groups. Somewhere out there saying that. Whatever. Okay. Right. Like I, I just focus on what I'm trying to put. It was deep on the belief. Mm. Yeah. I, I, I think again, I, I don't have to, I, if I, I could just like itemize like a, a bunch of them, right? Like again, like when you start talking about uh, free medical, uh, you know, free, free Medicare for all and things like that, um, like those things sound good. But then when the progressive goes so, so as far as, no, we need to just completely dismantle private health and healthcare. Um, as you're calling them, but I, I call them leftists. When leftists start doing those things, I think, yeah, you got a problem. Um, or when you start saying like, hey, you know, like we want to start being more affirming towards trans people and, and recognize them, uh, their dignity and things like that. But then you have leftists that start making ridiculous statements like, if you won't date a trans person, you're transphobic. Um, if you refuse to have sex with a gay person, you're homophobic. Um, and all of those kinds of nonsensical things. It's like, no, 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 we've gone a little bit too far. Or when you have leftists that are saying things like having kids scantily clad, dressing at a drag show um, with other people, with, with, with grown men putting dollars in their pockets, um, that, you know, that's not a problem. That's not sexual. Uh, you're too conservative. When those kind of things start coming out, it's like, yeah, nah, I don't know how we, I don't, I don't know where the common ground is ever going to be here, but it seems like that's where we start running into these problems. And those kind of things are, that, that stuff is almost exclusive to the left. Um, and it, it seems like every time progress can be made, the left finds some way of, leftists find some way of ruining it. And I think, yeah, those are, those are just some of the examples. So, uh, hmm. I wanted to circle back. Uh, we'll get to the data. Tra well, we have time because I know you have to go soon. Um, but um, uh, I, I, I'll, 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 maybe we'll get back to the data trans person. Um, I wanted to uh, get to the BLM mantling the family unit. Okay. Uh, mm -hmm. So I, uh, I have never heard of them saying this. I've heard you say this before. Um, I don't think I'm not saying that you're a liar or anything. I just like I don't I haven't heard of this uh, of them saying that, but let's uh, work with it, right? Um, so I don't know the contours uh, of any statement that they said, right? So if you if you have um, some documentation of like the contours, like exactly what they were saying, then I'd love to see it. But 
Um, I wonder if I can Google that. Go, keep going. Keep going. Sure. Mm. But the idea of dismantling the family unit. What I hear as progressives, as a leftist, proud leftist, um, when I, I hear that, uh, I it sounds like reimagining the family unit, right? Like um, how people thought, like defund the police, might get rid of the police, right? Um, and it's like, oh well, we're talking about like you know changing uh, priorities, moving budgets around, right? To like maybe less focus on uh, uh, providing the police with like heavy armaments and more using funds like that for social programs um, that would stop crime before they happen in the first place. So um, uh, when, I, when I'm hearing, like, dismantling the family unit, as you said previously, um, it, it, it sounds like uh, um, this I- idea of the nuclear family structure uh, as the um, one and only way to look at a family is problematic. And I would agree with that. I would say there's lots of other family structures that you can have, right? Like, um, and I think we've, we've, we've talked about this before. We've uh, talked about, like, um, I'm almost sure, certain you agree that, like, the idea of extended family, right, being an important part of the uh, uh, family unit, right? Like that, um, that rather than just, like, relying simply on a mother and a father, right? But that's not um, what's stated. That's not what's stated. Oh, no, I, don't, I, I don't know what's stated. Remember, I said I don't know. I'm just, like, really, I'm saying this is what I'm, I'm imagining um, with, like, reimagining the family unit. I have no idea what's stated. Like I said, I didn't hear this before. So Okay. Here, sure. let me, I, f- I found the quote. Okay. Um, I'm going to, I'm just going to give it to you on PolitiFact. Okay. okay? Um, <clears throat> let me, let me just link it to you. One second. Here, I just scroll down to the part where it says we disrupt the family, the the Western prescribed nuclear family unit. Uh, control F, we disrupt. Okay, uh, critics of Black Lives Matter point to uh, some of the statements on its website, including uh, that it says we disrupt the Western prescribed nuclear family structure. Okay, um, uh, is it is there another time it says? Okay, let me uh. uh so, so later down in this uh, political fact article, oh, I can put this in the chat uh, for the rest of you guys. Um, let me do that real quick. Um, uh, so let me read the. Oh, uh, thank you also, uh, XRO Fist, for three something for seven months. Hey, we get one more individual person. So it's a hype train or a boost train because we're doing that now, apparently. Uh, subs to the channel, give bits of gift subs if you're enjoying the content, right? Uh, if you like the fact that I brought you this thing. Um, and that we're doing this thing, you know, having this conversation, which I think a lot of you wanted. Um, if you appreciate that, support the channel, subs to the channel, get bits. If, subs, if you have Amazon Prime, just Prime, give me usually one free sub, one free sub per month on this community. Helps out a ton. So we get a boost train started. Okay, um, back to this. Uh, so it says, uh, for what you define, provided, um, that uh, why what Black Ma- uh, what Black Lives Matter says, right? So that's like a subti- subtitle. And, and it says, first, Brewer's statement, I don't know who Brewer's is. Brewer's statement doesn't fully represent what the Black Lives Matter website says about families. Okay. Um, and it gives you a, a quote from the, the website. We disrupt the Western prescribed nuclear family structure requirement by supporting each other as extended families okay, and villages that collectively care for one another, especially our children, to the degree that mothers, parents, and children are comfortable. It says on the page titled, What We Believe. Um, the movement, which was formed in response to the 2013 acquittal of George Zimmerman, and it put watch, blah, 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 um, also says, uh, we make our spaces uh, family friendly and enable parents to fully participate with their children. We dismantle the patriarchal practice that requires mothers to work double shifts so that they can mother in private, even as they participate in public justice work. Okay, um, so this is the, the statement, right? This mm-hmm. seems like what I was saying, like, correct? Like, I, I even used some of the same language just now. Um, that, like, it's challenging the idea of a uh, family unit simply being nuclear, right? But simply being a mother and a father. Um, and, uh, like, acknowledging the idea of extended families and their benefits, right? And uh, different ways to, to, to form these families. Um, and maybe not... Um, like legally, uh, um, uh, 
um, privileging, privileging, yes, legally privileging uh, simply a nuclear family unit. Okay, so uh, if a... Why wouldn't you privilege a nuclear family family unit? Okay, yeah, who's sure. Who's going to have more interest in the... the, the who's going to be the most invested into the upbringing of a child besides the nuclear family? Yeah, guys, yeah, subsidy on convincing yourself. Stop this boost train and we get started. It'd be great. So, you, know, you like the content, it's good. so we can continue. Um, use your Amazon Prime to find gaming on the channel. It'd be a big help. Uh, <clears throat> who would be more uh, interested? It's not about it would be more. It's just that there are other interested parties, right? So, like a, 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 a grandmother. A teacher's interested. A teacher's interested. Does sure. that mean that that person, right? Like, so it's not saying anything. It's almost sure. a vacuous statement to say that there are no, other people no, it interested, isn't. clearly. But if we're talking about the family unit and you're talking about these things um, in context, in competition with the, fam with, the no. with the nuclear family unit, well, they are. No. And they say, well, well, well that's they say that statement says. They say, sorry, competition. Um, let me uh, Google that. No, sorry, that competition. Let's see competition here. Maybe I'm spelling it wrong. The competition here? No, they don't say the word con okay. competition. It's implied by the fact when you say we disrupt. Why would you need to disrupt the Western prescribed nuclear family structure? Why would you need to do that unless you feel like something greater exists? Sure, sure, sure. Um, so then that's so where here's, the competition sure, comes No, 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 no. I, I, I'm, I'm saying sure, sure, and like I'm acknowledging your words, but I'm not like agreeing with them. Um, so uh, when I look at this, and it's possible that I have it wrong, it's... Uh, I'm just reading this now, right? I hadn't seen this before. I'm just reading it now, right? But I'm just going off of what you've given me. And so what I'm looking at when I see that, right, is when you're saying disrupt that, right? Well, I say like, and I say the words like unprivileged, um, the nuclear family. It's not that I would say that um, we would have to take anything away from the mother-father-child um, dynamic, right? I mean, by unprivileged, I mean raise up these other family structures. So acknowledging you wouldn't that need to disrupt the, you wouldn't need to disrupt the the Western prescribed nuclear family structure in order to do that. Um, I uh, I think you would I but like we had different ideas with the with the word disrupt means here, um, oh. and I can I can only just go on this but like well let me just get my idea out for what I think it is okay All right okay. and then you can really agree or disagree with it. Um, so what I uh, um, what I think it is is that um, uh, we we see that within our society um, we have a lot of different family structures that just people live in, right? Whether they want to or not, they simply exist in these family units, um, and uh, those family units don't have the level of support in terms of um, structures and sort of, of, of like um, tax law and, and in terms of like various benefits uh, that are given to a nuclear family um, that they are kept out uh, of that. So an easy example, right? An easier example of this would have been um, like the, the gay married family unit. Okay. Um, so previously before that court case, uh, you would have a loving father and father uh, with their children. And they were locked out of, you know, the tax benefits, um, the medical uh, benefits, like the um, uh, being able to uh, like share the responsibilities for a child, like to make the decisions and all that, right? They would have been locked out of all those things that are conferred upon a married couple. And so the disruption came when we allowed them uh, to uh, have all those same rights and privileges. Um, and you, and in fact, you, you literally heard uh, conservatives call it disrupting the family unit. Like that's a term they use, right? Um, so I don't remember that. No. Okay. Well, I do, but but we don't have to argue on that. Um, so like, but what happened was is that we raised them up, right? So that they were uh, co-equal in terms of the law. Maybe not your opinion on what the, their effectiveness, is, but in terms of the law, we raised them up to be equal, so they could have all those uh, support systems for their particular family unit. Right. Rather than saying that a mother and father um, and their children, right, is the only way of doing uh, these things. Let's give other uh, let's understand that other people have are living in different ways and let's um, give support, uh, put support systems in place 
for those other uh, structures, right? Including maybe an extended family or something. So I'll stop there. What do you think? I don't think that would be disrupt disrupting to, to start saying uh, we'll focus on additional family unit styles or anything. You wouldn't have to disrupt anything to do that. Yeah, I, I, okay, so uh, we disagree with the phrasing um, here, and if, like, I, I don't know how we move past that if, uh, if you can't see, um, um, uh, if you can't see uh, that as well, um, like, that's, that's my uh, interpretation of that, but I don't see anything uh, that, that necessarily says that my interpretation is definitely wrong, or that your interpretation is definitely right. Right. If you're just talking, well, hanging the word on disrupt, disrupt me can mean lots of things. Right. Um, it can be a negative thing or, or a positive thing. Right. Like, yeah, like disruptions in, in the market. Right. Um, it can be a negative for, for, for somebody. Or it can be like very positive. You know, um, so Only for people who are rooting for destruct, d destruction of the market. No, no, I, no I, I just know. Oh, OK. No, I said disrupt. Right. Um, sure. So you said you think disrupt is the same as destruction? Uh, no, I don't think that it's the exact same dis as okay. destruction, though. Oh, yeah. Like, uh, so is that what you just said? Like, those are helping, hoping for the destruction of the, of the market? Uh, when you say disrupt, what do you mean when you're when, in refer reference to the market? What, what, are you, what are you referring to? Uh, it can be lots of things. Well, the market has an intention, right? Like, like there, there's the idea that the market should always be at an increase, right? Like that's like it's literally like a fiduciary responsibility to constantly grow and expand as a business. Simply breaking even isn't actually meeting your fiduciary responsibility. You should be growing and getting higher returns. So then a disrupting a disruption in the market is typically something that stops that growth, that stops this goal of continued higher production and whatnot. So then in that case then yeah, so it, maybe it doesn't necessarily mean to destroy something. It just means something to harm it in some sense. But right? not necessarily, right? And again, it's from your standpoint, right? Like you could say that uh, Google was a, a market disruptor. Um, you could say um, uh, uh, Facebook. Um, you could say a lot of the, uh, you could say the internet. Um, all these things were, uh, oh, Netflix, Netflix, a perfect example. Netflix, market disruptor. Um, like that's like they they definitely call Netflix a market disruptor, right? Um, and it upended like how a segment of the market worked. Um, I guess you could say that it caused uh some uh well you can I'm not guess but it did cause the destruction of uh something that happened previously, but like it was a shift, um you know like a shift to something that people tend to think is better. Um, so, but I, I think disruption is not synonymous with destruction. Um, and see, you seem it, in the context of be. the BLM, it can be, but I don't think it, it, it is. And that's a problem, right? Like, because it, it can be, uh, uh, destructive and, or can be simply transformative. Um, then like, I can look at it within the transformative light, that statement, the BLM statement, then you can look at it in the destructive light. Now, I'm not sure how we can bridge that gap, uh, but yeah, yeah, yeah I guess. We're but I, 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 I can say though that is like what I'm talking about at the very least, right? But putting the BLM statement aside is something that's talked about on the left all the time, right? Like, well, the how my interpretation of that statement, whether it's correct or not, is that the, that priority is something that we talk about on the left on the progressive progressivism leftism right like that hey we have other family structures we want to um uh, protect them we don't, don't want to say to people um who are in um like being raised by like a, a grandma and, and grandpa right like um who like hey it may not be given birth to these kids but the these ones are, are within my care right like uh, we want to provide supports for them too. The law currently doesn't give them enough supports. We want to uh, put them in a co-equal footing uh, with uh, the the nuclear family unit. Um, that is something that progressives do want. Yeah, I don't know. I just to me, it just feels like when you're talking about 
again, you, you, can, you can introduce additional concepts without having to disrupt something, but we don't have to focus on the word disrupt. I think, again, that there's, oh, God, it's just hard when, when, uh, with the other examples that I'm talking about, I mean, because we kind of jumped all over the place. So I think uh, I'll just try to paraphrase the three things that I've brought up so far. One of them is, first off, that, that, the, that a lot of times that they will, like, suggest untenable ideas and as a result, like, disrupt the political process such that we don't get anything. Um, that's one of their problems. And the other one is the fact that um, it does seem like they are antagonistic towards the family unit. Um, and, I mean, I guess we're just going to have to agree to disagree on that one. Um, and then I guess the other thing is that, uh, what was it there? Um, uh, you said, <clears throat> I was writing it down. Uh, so you said, a BLM dismantling that. Oh, uh, trans not telling, like, telling parents in schools about that stuff um like you know like that the kids are trans um oh, sure. and and you need to date a trans person and being uh anti or transphobic go ahead please sure oh yeah i guess it would be, be some of their intolerance of any forms of conservatism um complete demonization of like any person that like at all pushes back against any any progressive ideas um it seems like leftists are just are just psycho um and i i think to me, uh, yeah, they're a lot of times harmful to actual progress. I would say the Black Lives Matter thing is a perfect example. Someone in my chat pointed out that, like, um, when the $15 minimum wage was floating around, liberals were actually advocating, like, okay, why don't we do 12? And then the leftists were like, nah, 15 or not, or nah. And then, of course, got literally nothing, um, which sounds like oh, perfect not leftist nonsense. We've been getting $15 minimum wages, like, states, but not. Right, but, they didn't, but at the federal level, they didn't get what they were trying to get. Like, um, what, what, the, what the thing that I don't think were actually pushing for was twelve dollars an hour, which that which could have gotten, which which could have actually been uh, something that might have been achievable. Um, you I'm not sure if it was some Republican support and stuff. I, I I disagree. I disagree that it was actually uh, uh, achievable. Um, uh, but well, we'll, you know, we'll just have to leave it. We have to leave that alone. Yeah, we'll, have, yeah, we'll oh, never know because okay. the leftists just went ahead and hard body stopped that from happening. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, again, uh, we're going to have to agree to disagree on that part. Um, but that's fine. Wait, wait, um, wait, I'm sorry. We're agreeing what? to disagree that the leftists were stopping us from being able no, to. No, do... I'm saying we're agreeing to disagreeing, agreeing to disagree uh, that uh, $12 minimum wage was achievable. Um, like whether oh, the leftists stepped in sure. or not. I, I, we already, I already agreed with it. I don't know. And I said, we'll never know I, because. Well, leftists or not. Of... Sorry. That's what I meant. Right. Yeah, well, whether they well, were there or not. Well, we'll never know. But we, what we can say, I'm sorry, let's just make sure that the facts are clear. The fact is clear that while liberals were advocating for $12 an hour, leftists were arguing, such as AOC, were arguing for $15 an hour sure. and unwilling to budge from that number. Absolutely. Right? Okay. okay. Yeah, sure. Okay. Yeah. All right. Um, so I wanted to uh, uh, go to the... Um, uh, needing to date a trans person, uh, being transphobic. Uh, I think just, okay, so that's a ridiculous statement. Um, I think that, uh, um, uh, I, in fact, and I don't know, <laughs> I don't know anyone, uh, who espouses that. Like, I, I just, I, I, I don't know. Um, if they, and if I do know someone, they haven't said that to me. I'd have to argue with them, uh, because that'd be a ridiculous thing. Um, it uh, is uh, saying... Okay, all right. Let me try to work with the state. Uh, in the past, like, I have said, and I, I believe that, like, it's weird uh, that... When people uh, say that they aren't um, attracted to uh, their uh, uh, people of other races, right? Like people uh, say that, and I'm like, that's kind of weird. It's kind of weird that, that, that that's the thing that you feel. Um, and I'll just have to take their word for it. But like, it seems weird. Um, is that racist? I wouldn't say it's racist. Uh, I think. Maybe it is said by problematic racial beliefs, right? Like a problematic uh, society that um, that like devalues like black beauty, for instance, right? Um, 
that uh, that elevates uh, the white standard of beauty. Um, uh, so, like, I think that's super weird. So, what I'm imagining that a person who says this again, I don't know anyone who says it, but um, I'll just have to take your word that some people do. Um, but like, I imagine uh, that uh, they are trying to say that. Well, um, this is problematic as well. You no, know? um, that. <clears throat> Uh, that m maybe the reason why uh, trans women are uh, seen as so unattractive is less uh, because of genitals and more because society uh, says otherwise. Um, guessing? But again, I'm not one of those people, so I don't know. I don't think that people would say trans people are unattractive just because of genitals or, or I, I think um, there's an there's a underlying belief, I think, in a lot of people that regardless of what you do to your outer body, that you're still a male. And so then that would make people like you can't really change your sex. You can change your gender, but you can't change your sex. So I would say that for some people, they would feel like it's a homosexual act to sleep with a trans person. I think that's probably one of the drivers behind people's resistance towards that. Yeah, that's so. Um, um, I I said genitals flippantly, but like I basically mean uh that part and um uh and that um you know uh, this attitude about um not being able to uh, change genders. I I guess uh what I would say is. Um, yeah, you know, I've talked to trans people. I've talked to uh, uh, trans women, and they like they they point out like, you know, for those who could pass, and now all of them could pass, uh, that they have men chasing them all the goddamn time. They have cis men, uh, straight men, chasing them all the time, mm -hmm. and uh, everything's hunky dory until uh, they find out otherwise. Uh, mm -hmm. But that initial attraction is there, right? Um, and they would sure. say that you are, in that case, attracted to their gender. They've made a shift and they are doing uh, a gender performance uh, uh, that is like a mating call <laughs> to, to uh, straight men. Um, mm -hmm. And that this is no different than a woman doing the same thing. Right? And that a woman can, well, well, then a woman who uh, it could otherwise be attractive can, can, uh, uh, sorry, a uh, cis woman, excuse me, make that clear. A cis woman uh, who is doing a, a different type of gender performance can make themselves unattractive because of like the uh, masculine properties that they are uh, displaying, right? You would have at least agree on that one, right? A cis woman doing masculine things uh, might be unattractive, becomes less attractive to many uh, straight males. Um, sure. Okay, yeah. So they're saying that what you're actually attracted to then is uh, like the gender performance, right? It's less like the chromosomes. You can't see the chromosomes. That attraction to that person would be um, to their, yeah, their outward gender performance. I, so I think there's a few things wrong with this. Number one, I think, um, yes, people can be attracted to so, well, the way something is, like the way it appears on the outside. But if you discover something else about it, you would like it would it, 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 that tra that attraction disappears because now you feel like you've been lied to. For example, um, I remember there was that show, The Bachelor, where uh, it was like a fake one where it wasn't an actual wealthy dude. They were pretending that the guy was wealthy, but he was just your average stay-at-home dude that like worked in a construction job. And you have these women fawning over him because women a lot of times are hypergamous and are looking for security, right? And in this case, they thought they had found their security. And so they were like, good, we got us, you know, whatever, we're going to compete. I can imagine like, you know, riding my horse and carriage, eating at fancy restaurants and doing all the, all the works. And that's what they were attracted to. And that's what they went after. It was after they won the show that it was determined, oh, by the way, this nigga broke, right? Like, I'm not actually a, 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 you know, a super millionaire. I'm just your average nigga, you know what I mean? I got a little place to stay, but, like, I'm not balling in any capacity. 
And for some of those women, the second they found out that that happened, it was fake. I mean, it, it would be a turnoff. I think a more succinct way of saying it is, if I decided to start gallivanting as a wealthy person and always arrived in limos and rented like really, really expensive jewelry and did all of these things to like kind of present myself as this person that had all this money and so on and so forth, and women were um, actually trying to give me a shot, but then discovered that, by the way, I don't actually have this money. Um, I think there are plenty of women that would say, oh, OK, well, I'm out. That's a deal breaker for me. And I, I think uh, it's almost ridiculous to try to, like, insist, like, no, 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 no. If you were attracted ever, like, you got to stay attractive because, um, you know, now we're we're in a we're we're in another place. Like, you know, I mean, like, you know, you've you've already, like, admitted that this is a thing that you're into. Like, it just it, I don't think it works that way. I think um, if, if I'm attracted to uh, people are attracted to more than just uh, the looks and the things that people present, um, like for a lot of people, um, it's the idea of potential procreation. It's the idea of, um, you know, you want you want you want you, you're attracted to the opposite sex. And the second you discover that a person isn't the actual opposite sex, you now feel like, OK, this is going to be a homosexual act, which um, for a lot of people, I would think if you're not prepared for something like that, that would probably be pretty devastating. And I think those are kind of the things that lead towards this, uh, this change of heart, this resistance once, once it's discovered. So um, I would definitely say that I don't think anyone's actually attracted uh, to the opposite sex. They're attracted to like these gender, uh, these gender markers. Um, uh, we can, because, uh, women who are otherwise, again, because of what I've said before, cis women who are otherwise physically attractive, uh, but who perform these, uh, masculine, uh, gender, uh, roles, right, practices, become unattractive, uh, to many, uh, cis straight men. Uh, like, and again, that, it's not the sex that attracts why? us. It's no. Why would it? Why would that happen? Because then they start associating them more with the opposite sex, or with the same sex. So, in other words, if it's like, hey, no, the you're same female, gender, gender, gender. No, 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 no. If you're a female and you start doing these masculine things, those masculine things are associated with males, and and uh, heterosexual men want to distance themselves from any sexual encounter that resembles something similar to to a male. Okay, That's, so again. Uh, so we, we it looks like we're just having a fight here on I just well disagree uh, on like the definitions of gender and sex as what you're describing I would say is gender, um and not sex. Uh, sex is just a well, description. Gender genders are based on sexes. Uh, have they not been? Um, I would. Mm, I'd say the gender roles, as we define them, are socially prescribed um, and change often, right? And change it through different societies, right? Um, and so, um, like, those are... I, I, I think maybe in the barest sense, like, of, of gender roles, like, that, like, 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 the most basic primary gender roles might you know, have some, have a basis in sex being like, you know, um, women are the nurturing types, right? Because they're mothers, right? And then men are the protectors because they are, you know, stronger, right? Like, I think things like those, maybe, um, you could, you'd have the best case for saying, uh, uh, for based in sex, but like a gender role, like a gender performance that is not based on sex are women wearing skirts and dresses, right? Like that has nothing to do with their sex, but so many people would say, "Well, that's well, that's a female thing," you know. Well, that's not. No, but it did have everything to do with their sex. The reason why men were required to wear things that were like significantly like sturdier and like covered their legs and all those kinds of things was because of the idea that um, men were doing work outside of the home and things like that, in which you know they were like, if you're if you're, they were more likely and prone to injure themselves. Whereas women clothes were always designed to be a lot more dainty because of the fact that they were going to be like in more safe and protected environments that, that was the motivation behind it. so well mm, okay so a woman doesn't have to wear those clothing within 
that environment. You can say that a man has to wear dirty clothing within a uh, uh, a, a dangerous, a hazardous environment, right? But a woman doesn't have to wear a dress or anything. Uh, she can wear anything. Uh, if it's going to be in a, in a safe environment, being the home, right? Then she could wear anything. But then being sure. prescribed to wear a dress is a political choice, a societal choice. And uh, beyond that, yeah. in other... I'll just finish with this. I'll just finish with this. In other societies, other societies, um, men wear uh, uh, clothing that are very dress-like, right? that have the same structures of a dress, but they aren't looked as feminine. So, leave it there. Okay, so the, the reason why, like, if this isn't about, like, what they have to wear, it's about what they typically wore, and this, since they were typically in the home and typically not working in those kind of environments, that's why their clothes were designed in such a way. Why not wear pants? Sense. Why not wear pants? Because pants obviously required more fabric and were typically designed about around the idea that, hey, this is where you're going to, um, like, like be, 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 this is where you're working. This is what you're doing. So it, it kind of makes sense. Women have, like, you look within an agrarian society, it's not like women literally just stayed inside the house. They were outside in the field but, uh, doing a lot of the same work that men do, right? Field, yeah. work, field work was primarily male work. Hold on. Not, not, hold on. You look at... Uh, uh, um, uh, these uh, societies that are still agrarian, men uh, do a lot of that heavy lifting, but women are also out there, like, interacting, doing a lot of the same work, right? That's absolutely the case that women assist uh, with that work. They do things within the, the, the physical house, but also within the farm as well. Right. They well, do yeah. have so in those societies, like yeah, like in China and places, right? Where like, yeah, there was a lot of field work. And guess what? China had things similar to pants. Women wore clothes, closed leggings, garments, lower garments. And it we makes sense. Have the yeah, same thing here. Like China didn't have special farming. Uh no, no, no. But pr farming was predominantly done by males. That's that's why. But I'm oh, sorry. But you're saying that women okay. Um, I, I I guess I literally have to like uh, bring a uh, a source talking about like the roles of women on farms, right? I guess I gotta have to do that, but I I don't I don't have that on me. Um, but okay, so my my thesis here uh, is the head. Um, um, there is nothing inherent to gender uh, that says that you have to do these different performances. Um, that these things aren't inherent to, sorry, inherent to uh, sex, excuse me. Um, that you have to wear these different clothes, like, um, to wear your hair uh, in a certain way. Um, there are all kinds of things that we do as gender performances that are not inherent to anything. Um, uh, and I would say that there's a general grouping of gender performances that are, are more associated with females, that as young men, young straight men, like uh, you and myself, uh, grow, up, grow up and our society says an acceptable thing to be attracted to her and vice versa. Um, no, so I, th I think, man, it's crazy like how downstream we get with these things. And it's really nuts. It really boils down to, down to this. The way I've always defined gender, and I think it's a really perfectly rational and perfectly reasonable definition system, is that gender um, are the roles and characteristics typically assigned to different sexes. So for instance, when we, we know the difference between a male and a man. When you say someone, like for example, you can have an adult adult male and you can say you're still a boy you're not a man right because there are specific characteristics which we associate with adulthood for those for grown men right and so when you see someone not doing that then we automatically know this person isn't being a man so if the fact that we can do that means that that we understand these things so with that being said if um with, so since that so since genders are der derivative, right? They're derived from the roles associated with the sexes. That's why when transgender men decide that they, they want to be, uh, they're, they're transgender, and then they start being, they, they start presenting as a woman, right? Because that's no that, the other that, way around. And just you see transgender men, I mean, I'm, so, I'm sorry, as... when, when trans transgender males start presenting as a woman, and transgender females start presenting as a man, because you want you you identify with the opposite gender, right? And so no, I I. No. Transgender men, like, start are women who start identifying no, no, as a male. I said, I said, transgender females 
start acting like men or like males. Okay. Transgender right. males start acting like women. And so when that happens, it's because they're trying to act like the opposite gender and gender is derived from sex. So it makes all of the sense in the world. And I think once we start like abandoning wholesale, like the, the entire notion of like, no, 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 the, the gender isn't a thing or, or, or once gender starts becoming even more downstream, right? When, once it, once it, we, how do I, de how do I define it? We, it starts out as gender is this one thing. And then now we're going to a point where it's like, okay, but the gender is not based on that thing anymore. Um, sorry, I'm making a decision. I think it's an impacting decision. Uh, I remember my speech. Um, I think I, okay. I, I, I think you, I, I can't say, I can't walk past this. I think you mixed up transgender male and transgender female, unless you're trying to do like an insulting thing. I'm not sure if that's what your goal is, but like transgender male is a person who's gone from female to male, right? Um, unless no, you're a transgender man is a person who went from man. female to male, a transgender, transgender male, man. a male, a, per, a person, a, a, a male is a person with what XY chromosomes, right? Oh, oh, hold on, but you said a trans male, right? Trans man, trans male, trans man. No, right? trans man and trans male are two different things. What are you talking about? Okay, all right, so I. Oh, okay. Oh, oh, okay. So you're saying something complete, trying to say something completely different. All right. So you're making a difference between trans male and trans men. So I've always heard of those course. things. So hold on. I've always heard those things uh, injured or changeable, right? You're saying there's something uh, distinct. Okay. All right. That's all right. That's fine. Then uh, that was just a bit confusing to me. I'm sorry. Uh, I hadn't it's heard it good. being used that way. I'm just going to move past it then. All right. Go ahead. As I, as I said earlier, you can change your gender. You can't change your sex. The chromosomes in your body are still going to be trying to insist that you 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 are a specific way. Like it's that's never going to go away. For the rest of your life, that's going to be a thing. So you will have to permanently, permanently do things to offset this natural inclination for your body to go a specific way. That's that's it's unavoidable, right? So yeah. then, I I mean, I, what do you, what do you mean? So 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 oh, then, you, you seem so like then you're still that male. You're still a male. Yes, you can be a yeah, woman. They're but you're a male. Male. Yeah, they're still male. Yeah, sure. Their sex is still male. Indeed. Right. That's what I'm saying. So you don't yeah. change your sex. You don't. That's what I'm saying. But a you're saying yeah, male, you can't. A, yeah. a transgender male is a person who is a male, is, but yeah. is but is but is but is uh, has now started presenting as a woman. So now they are a transgender woman, but they are a male. They are a male. Oh yeah, they're, they're, yeah. Not, I, I, I don't didn't, I don't disagree with that, and I don't think. Well, most uh, trans people who are in a good, I'm sure you can find someone sure it says otherwise. Um, but like, yeah, they still have a male body structure, and um, like a, a trans a trans woman uh, still has a male body structures, and uh, like they should get their prostate examined, you know, when they're like 50 or something, you know, right? Um, yeah, that's. I'm not gonna fight you on that. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Um, so I I would say then we understand then that like transgenderism is uh um sorry yeah tran transgenderism is that that gender is like is is the association that we have with the given with 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 the given with the, with, with the sex like it it's still based on sexes right and so to me um yeah it just it just makes all the sense in the world that uh that gender is derived from sex and it seemed like that's what we were challenging originally uh, like, um, I guess, uh, as I've already said that, um, only for the most basic primal, I don't know, those, um, uh, characteristics that I, I would say that are, are, could be considered derivative. I would say so much of our performances, um, aren't, uh, aren't uh, derivative. That those things are just, um, what our society deems acceptable for these two different categories of people uh, to engage in. Um, yeah, I don't, know. I, I, I don't think we'll be able to move past that, but like it's. Well, but you can, you can have this conversation without going into the sneaky suspicions or implications or impulses of society by I'm, I'm just trying to define things as they are, right? Like, so just as long as we, we get to that agreement, we could probably like start moving downward from that conversation, but it, 
that was just a part of what I was saying originally, that it seemed like you were challenging that I needed to clarify in order to make sure that we could actually move forward in the conversation. The fact that gender is derived from sex. And so when someone starts presenting as the opposite sex, uh, or, or when someone, yeah, someone presents as if they are the opposite sex, but indeed they are not, then yeah, that's mm -hmm. going to be challenging to some people. They're going to feel like they've been tricked. Mm -hmm. um, and then they're going to lose that attraction because now once they realize this person is an actual male, right, then it's going to feel, it's not going to feel, it would be a homosexual act at that point. Maybe it is the limit of language and uh, our ability to communicate with each other. Um, uh, I would say that maybe uh, gender and gender roles are heavily overlapping, but maybe not uh, perfectly synonymous. Uh, no, maybe they're not, they're I, not I may... perfectly synonymous. I'm, I'm okay. Just... So, so, so then I'm, but, and, and so. This is why I'm, I'm trying to get to is that like if they're not perfectly synonymous, if gender and gender roles aren't uh, perfectly uh, synonymous, or gender performances aren't perfectly s synonymous, then um, then maybe I can say that gender is derivative, um, but those gender roles that are built on top of that uh, that they come from that those the, those performances aren't necessarily derivative, um, and that uh, like as a society we can just decide um, uh, that you know. It's acceptable for one group uh, to take on gender uh, characteristics of another, um, and it still it says nothing about like uh, a person, a person's character or anything like that. Um, yeah, um, but okay. So trying to, I guess, reel it back um, uh, to well, what we're prime. I'm so sorry, bro. It's it's seven eleven. Okay. Um, I we could resume this another time. Yeah. Um, we can, we can, uh, you know, I'm always available to talk earlier in the day and then we'll be able to have a long conversation. We can plan it out, know exactly what we're going to talk about, maybe text back and forth with them, an itinerary of where we want the conversation to go so that we know exactly what we'll be talking about. We can prepare and all that. Sure. Uh, the only problem is that, like, it, <laughs> it never stays on track. Because, <laughs> yeah. like, yeah, we're, we're trying to explain things to each other and, and, like, okay, well, here's an example. Hey, do you agree with this? No? Okay. Well, let's spend an hour talking. Not that thing <laughs> for sure but with a written, but, written itinerary it yeah yeah way easier you know because sure, sure. Like, yeah, we're getting lost but we, we you know we, we at least know where we're trying to get to okay uh, all right um but uh yeah this was a lot of fun i enjoyed uh talking with you stick around folks we'll have more uh content after this if you'd like um but uh thank you to uh my man fanatic fanatic look we didn't yell at each other once right are, are we yeah. elevated our voices, but like we didn't yell at each other once. I <laughs> it's like a milestone for us. <clears throat> well, uh, yeah, it's we're not on a panel because if 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 the, if this was a panel discussion, then I would be frustrated because I would know within a very short amount of time somebody else was going to jump in on the conversation and start uh you know arguing their own ridiculous retarded position, right? Like. Like, or when I'm trying to make a point or ask you a question, someone else is going to jump in in the middle of it and be like, well, hold on, what about I want to say? Um, and so then we just won't get anywhere. And I think that added pressure of knowing that retards aren't going to know when to shut up and let us get, let us like suss this thing out. Um, I think that like greatly increases the tension in the conversations. Mm -hmm. I think it's. And it's not I won't, you, I won't use the same language. People. I'll leave that language up to you. But I'll—I I'll, uh, <laughs> think I can agree with part part of that sentiment. Okay, all right. Uh, <laughs> I'll leave it. I'll be diplomatic like that. <laughs> but okay. a fanatic, uh, my my brother. Like uh, to make it clear, just like I said at the start, um, I appreciate you. I do consider you a friend, right? No matter how many deep disagreements uh, that you and I have, um, I I always uh and grateful that you spend so much time interacting with me and my community uh and you know like i, I have a lot of fun with you um so the, the frustration uh, of uh, i have fun and higher blood pressure <laughs> and shorter lifespan oh, because that. of you but it's all worth it <laughs> so. well you can count on that for me i'm gonna I'm 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 raise that blood pressure <laughs> all right my man you have a good one all right man peace out